Dear brothers and sisters, aim high. If you seek to be an average Muslim, you know, and, and that's why I, I, I despise it when people self-label, say, I'm a non-practicing Muslim. You've basically sealed your salah. <laughs> I'm a non-practicing Muslim, I don't pray five, that's what it means, I don't pray five times a day. Aim high. If you seek to be an average Muslim, you're going to be a very deficient Muslim. If you seek to be a person of taqwa, then maybe you'll fall short and you'll sin sometimes. But if you seek to be a person of ihsan, seek to be a person of excellence, there's one way there, and that's a personal connection with Allah. Ihsan does not come except through personalizing that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's where you find the Salaf say, the pious predecessors say, nothing establishes that connection like Qiyam. It's too busy throughout the day, too much going on. There is nothing that connects a person to Allah like that time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He descends at that time in a way that befits Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's calling out to you. And He's saying, who wants to come close to me? Who has an appointment? Allah has all the time for you. Allah does not take slots. It's not restricted for some religious people somewhere in the world. No, the broken, the sinner, the, the, the righteous, the person who's trying to be righteous, Everyone calling upon Allah, that time of the night, that's your time to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Hassan, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, there is nothing, there is nothing. He said to a, a, a person who asked him, what is it that brings a person closest to Allah? He said, مَا أَعْلَمُ شَيْئًا يَتَقَرَّبُ بِهِ الْمُتَقَرَّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَفْضَلَ مِنْ قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ Nothing brings you closer to Allah than Qiyam al-Layl. Al-Fulayl, rahimahullah ta'ala, he also, one time, uh, he grabbed the shoulder of a man and he said to him, Yanzilullah ta'ala, kulla layla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down every single night ila sama dunya to the lowest heaven. Fayaqulu rabb. And so the Lord says, Kadaba bin da'a mahabbati fa'ida jannahu laylu na ma'anni. A person has not told the truth. They have lied when they claim to love me, but when the night comes, he sleeps on my appointment. Na ma'anni. He sleeps when I come down to meet him, when I speak, when, when, I'm, when I'm ready to listen to that person, ready to listen to him or her. And you say, You love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alaysa kullu habibin yakhlu bi habibihi. Allah says, Isn't it that every lover spends some time with their lover? And he says, Ha ana da muttali'un ala ahibba'i idha jannahum layl Here I am looking out to my servants when the night comes, looking out to my lovers, those that love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ghadan uqirru uyuna ahibba'i fi jannati. And he says, And tomorrow when they come to me, then I will satisfy their eyes, I will cool their eyes, I will fill their hearts with my jannah, those same people that I love. You want to be from those who are muhib of Allah, those who really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's that only time, no distractions. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, something small. And the greatest thing you can ask at that time is forgiveness. That's the greatest thing. What am I going to ask Allah? Forgiveness. The greatest causer of stress is your sins because that's what puts the barrier between you and Allah. And that's why that idea is always at the forefront of any discussion on tahajjud, any discussion on the night prayer from the Qur'an and from the sunnah. In those last moments of the night, they're seeking forgiveness from Allah. The last 10 nights of Ramadan, Allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibbul afu fa'afu anni. You're asking Allah for forgiveness. Hal min mustaghfirin fa'akhira lahu. Is there anyone that's seeking forgiveness so that I can forgive that person? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, as he sees that slave of his standing up at night, يَقُولُ لِلْمَلَائِكَ أُنْظُرُوا مَاذَا يَطْلُبُ عَبْدِي Go see what he's asking. Go see what she's asking me for. فَيَقُولُ الْمَلَائِكَ أَيْ رَبِّي رِضَاكَ وَمَغْفِرَتَكَ Oh my Lord, they're asking for your pleasure and for your forgiveness. فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ أُشْهِدُكُمْ Allah says to the angels, Bear witness, O my angels, أَنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَهُ وَرَضِيتُ عَنْهُ that I have indeed been become pleased with that person and forgiven that person. So that's your time to get close to Allah and ask Allah for sins. That sin that's wearing you down, that sin that's bearing on your conscience, it's sins that prevent qiyam and it's qiyam that prevents sin. <laughs> so you got to take that first step of walking away from that sin and that step forward is going to be at the night prayer. And that's where you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I'm sorry. 
when everything's quiet, when it's just me and you. I'm sorry, Ya Allah, and I'm seeking your forgiveness. The last thing I will say to your brothers and sisters in this regard is don't belittle the small amounts of Qiyam. Beginning of the night, end of the night, middle of the night, two rakas. Don't belittle it. It matters. And that's why the Prophet said in the authentic hadith, Man qama bi ashri ayat, lam yuktab min al Whoever stands up and just reads 10 ayat, 10 verses, will not be written as a person of heedlessness. Do not be from the ghafileen, those people who are heedless. Heedlessness means you have a barrier, you don't perceive God properly, you don't understand your purpose properly. If you're standing up and praying just with 10 verses, reading two, two short surahs, you won't be written from al ghafileen وَمَنْ قَامَ بِمِئَةِ آيَةٍ كُتِبَ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ And whoever stands up and recites a hundred ayats, then they are written from the exceedingly devout, the pious. وَمَنْ قَامَ بِأَلْفِ آيَةٍ كُتِبَ مِنَ الْمُقَنْطَرِينَ And whoever stands up and recites a thousand verses, which by the way, if you want to do it once in your lifetime, the last two juz of the Qur'an is a thousand verses, then they will be written amongst those who are piling up good deeds, who have gone far ahead of everybody else with their good deeds. Sometimes it takes that example. Sometimes it takes reminding yourself that the small thing counts while you're aiming to get better, while you're aiming for the bigger thing. So that you don't think of Qiyam al-Layl as some sort of habit that's just reserved for this exclusive group of people. No, it's not. It's for the Muslims. It's for those who want to stand up and pray, those who want to enjoy that connection with Allah, seeking first and foremost His pleasure and His forgiveness. And that's why Ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, in a narration from Abu Ghalib, he says that Abdullah ibn Umar used to come upon us in Mecca. Mecca he used to pray at night, long prayers in the night. So one night he said to me, right when Fajr was about to come in, Ya Abu Ghalib, Quran? said, once you stand up and pray, even if you're going to read just a third of the Quran, I mean a third of the Qur'an. You know, Fajr is almost around the corner. So I said to him, Ya Aba Abdul Rahman, Fajr is right around the corner. What do you mean? How am I going to read a third of the Qur'an? That's maybe something that, you know, you guys do. <laughs> we don't do a third of the Qur'an. So he responded, in the Surah Al-Ikhlas, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ تَعْدِلُ ثُلُثَ الْقُرْآنِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ is equal to one third of the Qur'an. Who would not want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, every night I used to read a third of the Qur'an, right before Fajr. So dear brothers and sisters, I know it seems like a distant habit, one for the exceedingly pious, but it's a way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that cannot be replaced by any other way. And inshallah ta'ala, those who are struggling with their five prayers to pray them on time, this will only help it bi ta'ala. It's not in place of it. It's a means of connecting yourself to the Lord that you call upon day and night. We call upon him for forgiveness and for salvation. My beloved brothers and sisters, wake up during the time of the Hajjud and pray. Then see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solves your problems, how Allah makes things easy in your life. One of the scholars said, the Hajjud is such a prayer which is like an arrow hitting its target. Like whatever you ask during the time of Tahajjud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely give you. Just try it out. Every night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lower heaven. He comes closer to the world to listen to the plea, to listen to the problems, to listen to the cries, to listen to the wants and needs of the people. Are we waking up during that time? Allah is saying, what you need, O oh man, O oh women, what are the things that you need, O oh slaves of Allah? And whoever asks Allah during that time, he gets it. Continuously pray tahajjud and see Allah gives you or not. Ask Allah for forgiveness, repent to Allah, cry to Allah. And ask Allah in the depth of the night when everyone else is sleeping. When you 
ask during the time of tahajjud when you pray during the time of tahajjud the sweetness of iman that you will feel nothing else in this dunya will give you the same amount of sweetness peace and happiness the way tahajjud will give you just wake up in the last hour of the night and put your head in prostration in sujood and cry to allah repent to allah and ask allah whatever you need allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely give you help us build a islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description